Hey guys, today I'm setting up an LLC in Idaho, uh, which is where I live. I've done this before, but I figured I'd document the process and show you just how easy it is. It's actually even simpler than it used to be. It used to be you'd have to print out a paper, send it in with a check. Um, now you can just do the whole thing online. You can still send in a paper if you want to. So what I'm doing is setting up uh, an LLC for my video business. So as you may know, I have a couple YouTube channels that are income producing. I have some passive income from there. I also have some video equipment that I've purchased and I, have, uh, I offer some studio services and some video and media production services. So I figured I'd have that all be under this, this one umbrella of this business that I wanna call Rick's Studios LLC. All the tax liability still gets passed through to me with an LLC, um, but this way it just helps it separate it out and keep it a little more clean and establish kind of this business entity rather than everything being under a sole proprietor, which is what it is by default um, for me, which is what I've been doing for the past few years. So I'm here on the uh, Idaho, um, it's sosbiz.idaho.gov website. And if we go to forms, we can just pull up this digital form. We can fill out, there's a few sections online. We just fill out the whole thing and then we can um, submit it right online. And I believe we can maybe pay with credit card. So there's a hundred dollar filing fee to set up an LLC in Idaho. Um, and let me just say, um, I guess, first of all, that I am not um, at all offering legal advice or financial advice or anything like that. I'm just documenting myself setting up this LLC, so don't get too carried away and crazy. Um, I'm going to click here on this uh, limited liability corporation. So you could also set up a like a, just a domestic corporation, like a C corp or S corp. Well, you set up a C corp and then and then apply to have it turn to an S corp. You can also just do an ABN, and that's actually cheaper. ABN is an assumed business name. That's only $25. That allows you to actually start accepting checks. So I could just do an ABN for Rick Studios and people could pay me and pay, make out the check to Rick Studios. But that doesn't provide any liability protection and it's not really a, it's not an incorporated business. It's just a name that you're doing business under. So what I, what I really want to do, what makes sense for me for my business is the Limited Liability uh, Corporation. So I'm going to click here on File Online. And then it comes up, um, read through all this. So I've actually been through this whole process before. But you want to read through this. It talks about choosing the name. Um, you can have a previously reserved name, but I didn't do that. So I said no. And I'm going to type in the name right here. It makes you type it in twice. So my spelling is Rick's Studios LLC. And you have to actually have that LLC. If you don't put that, it's not going to let you go on. It's going to, oh, well, maybe it will. Oh, no, it doesn't. See, the box turns red. So you need to put either LC, LLC, L dot L dot C dot or you can actually spell out limited liability company, uh, limited li or just limited company. So I'm just gonna do LLC, and that's fairly common. Rick's Studios LLC. This is the full name of the business. So keep in mind, um, and actually before this step, you probably should, there's a way you can look up and see if the name's taken, which I already did. But, um, so check and make sure your name's not taken. Um, you can search on the same site to find that out. Now I'm just gonna put in the address. I already have it saved in my clipboard. Um, so this is the address of the, uh, I'm going to get rid of these dots here. So this is the address where I do business of my office. So we just go next here. And then the registered agent. So you have to have a registered agent, someone that's responsible for your business that's going, well, someone that's in charge of the correspondence um, between the state and your business. And so I'm not going to use a commercial one. I'm just going to use myself as the registered agent. Um, just because it's a good way to go when you're starting out. You can always change this at any point, but I'm going to use myself because I know kind of what I'm doing with this. But you'll want to make sure, you know, talk with your accountant, um, see about what you want to do for your registered agent. So I am now the registered agent. Well, once I file this, I will be. And then governors. Um, you have to add a governor, so I'm going to add myself. This is not a partnership. This is just going to be me. So it's a sole, single-member uh, LLC. So I'm just adding just myself as the governor, but you could add multiple if you want to have a, a partnership or multiple people in the business. So this section is just to confirm everything that's already been put in. So we basically just double check, make sure you have your entity name spelled correctly, make sure the address is in there properly, make sure the registered agent information is correct and the governors are correct, and then click next step. We have to um, check these boxes, so read and make sure you understand this. Um, the information you're providing is going to be public. Everything you put here, the address, the name of the registered agent, all that stuff will be public. The name of the business, of course. People can just look it up online from anywhere in the world. Um, 
uh, certify that you're the, the uh, I am the person whose signature appears on the filing. So you're signing for yourself. And we'll check this last box too. And then we will just sign by typing in our name and then the date. I just click today because it's today's date that I'm signing. And we click the next step. And that's it. So now, well, we file online or we can print and mail. I'm going to file online because it's much more convenient for me. So we'll click file online. So here we go. We come up with an option here. We can pay with a credit card. We can pay with Access Idaho. So we're just going to pay with the credit card here. The total is $100 for Rick Studios LLC. So I'll click pay with credit card. And then I've got to grab my wallet, which is actually right here. So it's redirecting us to a, uh, I think it's a third party like payment processor, or maybe it's through the, yeah, it's a third party. But anyway, so the total is gonna be $101. Maybe they're adding a dollar for payment processing. Very reasonable. So I'm just gonna fill out the information for my uh, credit card here and click next. And then we type in the card number. Okay, I have my credit card information all entered. I'll just click next here and then submit payment. And so it says your payment is being processed. I'll wait and see. See if my credit card goes through. All right, payment successful, awesome. I can download a receipt, which I will do. So we'll just download this receipt right here. We'll save it to my computer. So that's basically it. Filing for an LLC online. That was pretty quick, pretty easy, right? Um, I would say not really a need to involve um, someone, you know, another company in doing this. If you're just a startup, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Maybe it's a good idea to have an accountant or, or run it by someone um, to decide what you want to do. But for the actual filing, um, it's very something you can just do yourself. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is apply for a social security number. I mean, so a, a, a tax identification number for the business. Um, what else we're going to do? Um, Obviously, set up on my website, email, all that kinds of stuff associated with it. But as far as the, the legal side, um, just that TIN number, and that's about it with the, what I need for the um, state on a state and federal level, I think. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it informative. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Catch you in the next one.